What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. And today I wanna talk to you all about what happens if you land a QA job that you really don't like? Ugh, I think I've been there. Okay, so in my own personal software testing journey, I now have had five job offers and worked four jobs, right? With that, my second position, actually probably my second second and third position, they weren't quite for me. And here were the reasons why. So my first position was probably the best position in the world because they had their systems on point, their processes on point, the people, the team was awesome and lax. I didn't have to be on camera for work all the time. So it really allowed me to step into that role, especially as a newbie and especially as being remote and to get my hands on the job more confidently versus if I had to step into a job where I was constantly on camera, I had so many meetings, all of these things, right? So my first QA position really allowed me to step into QA. That's not always the first case for the first QA job, okay? Or any first job when you're transitioning into something new. Okay, so in my second position, as a software tester, you, you do learn the skill set of being in a database in SQL or SQL, structured query languages, right? However, in every QA position, you don't have to use it as much. You don't really use it all. It just depends. It's, but however, learning SQL or being in a database is a whole nother skill set that can pay you like 80, 90,000, $100,000 job positions, right? However, in my second position, they were very database heavy. You see, every application has an attached database, right? What you see on the front end of the application, that data is housed in the back end, okay? And so to make sure that the front end, what the user sees, we use structured query language or SQL to validate and verify what was pulling from the back end is coming to the front end correctly, right? See, it's a skill set that I'm willing to learn, to evolve, it's a skill set that I can use, but it's not a skill set that I wanna use every single day as a, as a manual tester. And so as a tester, I decided after two months, eh, this wasn't for me. This also can depend on how simple or complex a software system is. You see, not only are you actually learning QA, testing methods and ways to test an application, you have to actually learn the application and how the user is gonna use it to test it. So depending on how simple or how complex the system is and how structured or unstructured a company is, that can make your job easier or harder. So for me, my second position, I left that, I put that left because it just wasn't for me. And ultimately what I was able to see too is for the same thing that I was doing, the frustrations and things that I was having in this company, I was actually able to leave and make $10,000 more with a more simpler system and uh, less stress. So sometimes you can actually fall into a job that has you using certain skill sets that maybe you know how to use, but maybe you just don't want to use them all the time. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, in the interview, they actually did tell me that they did heavy SQL. What I didn't know was that heavy, all right? I didn't know that I was gonna have to use SQL, uh, filtering and sorting through a database, you know, at such a high level every day, all right? So I learned my lesson. I learned that if I have to do that every day, I don't wanna do that. I didn't sign up to be a data administrator. So if a job requires heavy database and SQL, is normally not the job for me. That's just not where I wanna be, okay? I like more testing um, outside of the database, functional testing, along with some leadership, BA, scrum master lead type of stuff. That's kind of where I like to lie. And for you, you actually want to know what are the skills that you actually like to use? So if you were in a job interview, the first tip, the best way to find out if this is a job for you and if you would even like the job is to ask them, well, what type of skills do you believe on a day-to-day -day basis I will actually be using as a QA tester with your company? That's number one. Tip number two, to find out if when you're interviewing, if this job is even for you, remember you're interviewing them, they're not just interviewing you, ask them what's their managerial style, right? This will uncover information, or at least it could uncover if they're a micromanager, if they're kind of hands off. You want to find out what that looks like. Also like to ask, what does a day-to-day -day interaction look like in terms of whoever I'm interviewing with, right? If they're like the hiring manager or like if they're the QA lead or the QA manager or the scrum master, I like to find out what does my day-to-day -day interaction look like to you? Are we constantly in meetings? What does the day look like? To try to get that in an interview so I can get a feel and allow them to kind of give me a behind the scenes, quick overview of what a day in the life of their company looks like as, as a QA tester. So my tip is to ask, 
One, what are your managerial styles or simply what would be a day-to-day -day interaction with you? All right, now tip number three, I like to also ask at the end of the interview and I like to ask, so what would you like to see from me within the next 90 days when you hire me into this role? You see how I did that? See, I did that with confidence as if I'm saying, hey, I like you, you should like me. And when you hire me, what do you want to see? This allows you to get a perspective of what they want you to enhance or where they would like for you to be. So you already know what the expectations are before you even get on a job. I'm not sure if you're going to like this one, but they always do when I ask it. I like to ask, so what have been your pet peeves or your dislikes with previous employees? Now, the reason why I don't say current is because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable with telling me about someone or not someone or giving an example of something that's going on with the team right now. So if I say past employees, that allows them to feel more comfortable with giving me kind of a behind the scenes of what they've dealt with, why certain employees haven't worked out and what they would like to see from me as a new team member coming onto the team. All right, so I just gave you four ways to find out even before you take the job or do the interview, how you can position to find out if this job is going to be the right job for you. And the first tip is to one, ask them in an interview what type of skill sets will be required as a QA tester in the day-to-day -day functions of this role. Two, what are their managerial styles? Three, ask them what will wow them in the next 90 days when you jump on the board. And four, what are their pet peeves or dislikes with previous employees. All right, so I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please be sure to subscribe, share with your friends, comment below. And if you're already not following me on Instagram, please follow me at I am Jennifer Geddes, where I show a day in the life behind the scenes stories, daily stories behind the life of a software tester. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.